Hi, so I drew a comic for my visual. Um, so one side is supposed to be a middle class family living in New York, and the other side is supposed to be a poor, a family living in poverty in New York. So the idea that I that I wanted to express from Kozel's book is that people are fundamentally the same, but grow to be defined by the world around them. So I tried to express that through this comic by um, having, so one side, the, the middle class side, the dad says, how was practice? And the son says, good, coach got us sweatshirts. And then the mom says, do you want more pizza? And the boy says, no thanks, I'm full. And then on the poor side, the mom says, how was your day today? And the son says, good, we played basketball in the park. And then he says, I'm still hungry. And the mom says, I'm sorry, that's all the pizza we have. So what I was trying to show is that the people are the same, kind of, but they're they're kind of defined by their class and their situation. So, like, both the boys are wearing New York Yankees hats. They both like New York Yankees. They both like playing basketball. And they both like pizza. But while the rich boy gets to play basketball on an organized team with a lot of other perks besides sweatshirts, the poor boy is probably playing in a rundown park with broken nets and not good shoes. Um, and then while the more wealthy boy gets as much pizza as he wants the poor boy has to go to bed hungry because they can't afford more pizza so both of the boys in the families they want the same thing and they they're very similar but they one has way more opportunities than the other which affects them in the long run So I picked out two quotes from Kozel's book that I thought represented this idea really well. The first one is on page 71, and it says, Maybe we simply ask for forgiveness for not being born where these poor women have been born, knowing that if we had lived here too, our fate might well have been the same. So I thought that this was really important because it's a rich it's a rich person admitting that the only difference between them and someone who lives in poverty is the class that they were born into. And if the roles had been switched, if the rich person was born into poverty, they would have stayed in poverty and vice versa. If the poor person was born into a middle class or an upper class, they would have stayed there. So then the second quote I chose from Kozel's book, um, I chose a paragraph on page 73 and I liked it because it explains how the poor which is often looked at as, like, bad people that do bad things, it, like, shines a, lot, it shines a lot of light on them, and it shows that they're good at heart, even though their their environment is kind of scary. Um, so it says, still, as the woman who directs the center that exchanges needles in the park has noted, there is a life force that persi- that persists amid the ruins. Mothers decorate the doors of their apartments with bright colored cards and little bells, and sometimes hearts drawn by their children. Those who can buy Christmas trees. Those who can buy Christmas trees. The crowds on 138th Street throng the stores that sell that sells cheap clothing at a steep discount. The vegetable stores that sell fresh carrots, oranges, and battered looking beets. The fish stores in those windows in the fish store in whose windows Trays of oysters, mussels, and whole scaly fish are displayed and piled high. The homes of many people, such as Charlene Washington and Cliff's mother, no matter how besieged, are nonetheless kept spotless and sometimes even look cheerful. The force of life keeps pressing against the dismal barriers in which it is contained. And finally, even in a tarnished corner lot on St. Anne's, on St. Anne's Avenue, a park evolves and teddy bears take their places in the branches of a tree. And, de- and destitute men who live in the streets and eat at the soup kitchen just next door or the soup kitchen in the basement of St. Anne's and heroin addicts who use dynamite, Black Sabbath, and Black Death and other name brands of needle drug of, of the needle drug their body need do not harm the bears or try to tear them down, but treat them with a certain tenderness and speak of them protectively. So that whole paragraph just really humanizes the people that 
media and stories often dehumanize. So I thought that was important. So I chose two outside readings um, from to relate to the topic. The first one was Class in America by Gregory Mancios. Um, so he's talking about like the misconceptions that we have about society in America and he calls he says myth. So myth number four is everyone has an equal chance to succeed. Success in the United States requires no more than hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance. And then he goes on to give examples of three American citizens. One super rich, one middle class, and one really poor. And he's talks he tells us that their ambitions when they were little both the really um both the super rich person and the middle class wanted to become president when they were kids and then the lower class person wanted to be a teacher so already when they're little the class that they're born into is defining who they think they can be what they think they can be even though fundamentally they're all really the same um and then after explaining how the upper class person ends up being an executive vice president for some company the middle class person is an assistant sales manager and the lower class person becomes a nurse. He states, <clears throat> reality number four, class affects more than lifestyle and material well-being. It has significant impact on our physical and mental well-being as well. So class really does define where we can go in society. Um, so the second outside source I chose was also by Gregory Man Mancios. Um, media magic making class invisible so the section he calls the poor are undeserving it says um, the media will provide us with sensational stories about welfare cheats drug addicts and greedy panhandlers compare these images and the emotions evoked by them with the media's treatment of middle class taxi evaders celebrities who have a chemical dependency or wealthy business people who are who use unscrupulous means to make a profit so this paragraph explains how the media portrays poor people as bad or evil by highlighting the bad things they do. In contrast to what the me media portrays, Kozo's book shows us that yes, bad things do happen in poor neighborhoods, but it's due to the environment and the people themselves are not bad. Off those texts and my comic, um, I hope that I portrayed the idea that people are fundamentally the same, start off the same, but are shaped by the environment that they grow up in. Thank you.